This is the 2022 Trek Roscoe 7, the brand's popular trail happy hardtail. This year, Trek revamped the Roscoe range with a significant geometry update and a move to 29 inch wheels from 650B. The changes were aimed to take it from an entry level cross country bike to a confident trail ripper. If you want more hardtail mountain bike reviews, then check out Alex's excellent video featuring four hardtails costing around £1,000. Fun for all levels of riders is at the heart of the new Roscoe, but does it deliver on making a better riding experience? Before we answer that, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell to know when we post a new video. The frame at the heart of the Roscoe 7 is Trek's Alpha Gold Aluminium. The mid-spec aluminium construction features buttered tubes for a better strength to weight ratio and smoothed out welds. In addition, the frame's parallel seat stays and top tube give an almost dirt jump-like appearance. The geometry updates give the Roscoe a capable 65 degree head tube angle and an up-to-date 74.7 degree effective seat tube angle. Trek has modernized the reach numbers too and this size large model I tested comes with a fairly lengthy 470 mm reach. There are six sizes available with sensible seat tube lengths, so you should be able to choose between sizes depending on your reach or wheelbase preference. For example, suppose you prefer a more nimble bike, in that case, you can select a smaller size. Or if you prefer something more stable, you should be able to size up and still not run into issues with the seat tube being too long. Our large test bike came with a 450 mm seat tube. Chainstay lengths are still short of 430 mm across all sizes, which should deliver playful handling. On paper, the Roscoe's geometry looks future-proof, but let us know what numbers you'd expect to see in a modern trail hardtail. There's plenty of frame clearance for the Trex Y 2.6 inch tires. Also, there's space for two water bottles inside the main frame. You get semi-internal cable routing through the down tube, plus it comes with boost hub spacing. Finally, it features some of the best frame protection for a hardtail we've seen, with decent chainstay cover and down tube fender to help fend off rock strikes. For this price at £1,400 or $1,729.99, Trek hasn't made too many compromises to the Roscoe spec. You get a RockShock Recon Silver RL fork with 140mm travel featuring an air spring. It has external compression and rebound adjustment too. That means you can set up the fork for your weight and riding style. The drivetrain is Shimano's 1x12 speed dual range, a capable performer with a wide range 10 51 tooth cassette. This is matched to a 30 tooth chain ring, so there's plenty of gear range to winch you up the steepest climbs and the smallest 10 tooth sprocket should prevent spinning out on fast ascents. The most noticeable downgrade are the brakes, which are Shimano's two-pot MT200 series. However, they still feature reach adjustment to help set up for your hand size. Otherwise, most of the remaining kit is from Bontrager, Trek's in-house brand, including the Line 30 comp wheels with a wide 30 mm internal width. This supports their wide 2.6 inch XR4 team issue tires. The cockpit 780 mm bar and 50 mm stem are from Bontrager also. And it's good to see Trek specking wider bars and shorter stems with better controlling handling. The dropper post is from Transex and our size large test bike uses a 150 mm dropper. So the bit you've all been waiting for, how does it ride? I notice first of all how big the tyres are, especially compared to other bikes in the similar category. For example, the tyres on the Trek here measure 2.5 inches wide, where the same, in theory, 2.6 inch wide tyres on the Saracen Zenith Elite actually measure in at 2.35 inches wide. It gives the Trek a tractor-like character, which has pros and cons. The bigger volume offers excellent comfort and additional puncture protection, so you can get away with running slightly lower pressures. This is great for helping smooth out trail chatter and finding traction on climbs. However, when pushed hard on faster downhill trails, the tires tend to squirm and have a vague feeling. It's not a lack of grip, 
It's just you can feel the tires roll on the rim, which is unnerving. For the most part, the seated pedaling position on the Roscoe is good, and it's a comfortable bike to ride. The balance between the wheels is okay. However, on steeper climbs, the short 430 mm chainstay and longer 470 mm reach on the size large, when we did have to shuffle forwards on the saddle to keep the front wheel tracking well. I had zero complaints about Shimano's 1x12 dual drivetrain that worked with the feeling of more expensive parts. The gear range was ample and the shifting felt crisp. I wasn't too impressed with the Transex dropper pose that had a little more friction than other cheaper posts I've used. It got the job done when needed, but isn't as refined as other posts. Also the brakes. They were adequate for mellow trails, but became overwhelmed on steeper sections and in wet conditions. That said, overall, the Trek is a fun bike to ride. There's no doubt about that. The 140mm forks, the cushioning of the tyres and the 65 degree head tube angle meant it smoothed out the trail impressively and gave confidence to its handling in all but the highest speed turns. The short rear end does help liven up the ride and makes the Roscoe more agile, but it's not the most poppy hardtail out there. I'd say it prefers to carve through the corners instead of being thrashed around, although quick changes of direction aren't a hindrance. I did find the RockShop Recon Fork needed higher air pressures than recommended. However, the performance was still admirable with good progression and while remaining sensitive even off the top. The 32mm stanchions can become outgunned, but this only becomes noticeable when pushing harder down technical descents. A part of this will be down to the tyres, but I never felt that the ride was overly harsh or fatiguing. The frame feels stiff and direct, but doesn't compromise comfort. The frame protection for a bike at this price is impressive, and it does help to quieten the bike down, which is a bonus. For the money, the Trek is a capable performer and can be pushed harder than you might expect. It takes the buzz out of the trail and is happily pedaling all day epics or blasts around the local woods. The brakes and dropper posts are the biggest flaws, but these can be upgraded over time and the Roscoe's new geometry should keep it relevant for a while. So, if you're looking for a fun mountain bike experience without breaking the bank, the new Roscoe is worth a second take. What do you think of the new Roscoe? Have the changes taken it from an entry-level machine to trail ripper as Trek intended? As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the little bell to know whenever we post a new video.